Hi guys, welcome to this tutorial on creating digital conversations in an asynchronous class using VoiceThread. It's important to design classes with rich discussions that can lead students to deeper learning. This can be done in face-to-face -face and synchronous classes by incorporating class discussion. However, up to now, designers of asynchronous classes have relied on text-based discussion posts to allow conversations. VoiceThread is an educational technology that permits an instructor to create a lesson that includes content and digital conversations between participants in the class, the instructor, experts, and outsiders. While VoiceThread enables digital discussions, the participants work in an asynchronous manner, so it does not require that participants meet at the same time to communicate. Instead, instructors and students can communicate via text posts, telephone posts, voice over IP, the microphone, webcam, or even uploading files. The VoiceThread assignment aligns with the big ideas for IDL 7130 because it allows online classes to be interactive and collaborative. This assignment asks students to create a lesson using VoiceThread. The content for the lesson is taken from the course textbook. The lesson should include academic content and also opportunities for the virtual audience to have rich conversations. This assignment requires the VoiceThread lesson to be completed with high levels of pedagogical organization. I won't go over all the requirements for this category, but there are a few things that I wanted to point out. First, several textbook chapters will be required this week that can be found in the pilot calendar. You should pick one of these chapters for the content to be used for your VoiceThread lesson assignment. Your VoiceThread lessons will be short, so you only have time to include key points and discussion prompts. Refer to your pilot assignment information to review the requirements for this category. This assignment requires that the VoiceThread lesson be developed with a specific slide structure. I won't go over all the requirements for this category, but here's a few things I wanted to point out. For this assignment, your VoiceThread lesson should be organized with an introduction and the four phases of the practical inquiry model. The introduction should have a title slide and many lecture slides. Your triggering, exploration, integration, and resolution phase, sections should have a signaling slide, mini lecture slides, and discussion prompt activity slides. The guesstimated number of slides is about 30 to 33. Refer to your pilot assignment information to review the requirements for this category. The assignment requires that the VoiceThread lesson have high quality presentation. I won't go over all the requirements for this category, but here's a few things I wanted to point out. First, the VoiceThread lesson should have a high quality design. There should be a title slide with a single large image and title that summarizes the big idea of the lesson. There should be signaling slide that has a black background and white text that identifies each section. There should be many lecture slides designed using the beyond bullet point design. Lastly, there should be discussion prompt slides that include the prompt and directions for completion. Refer to your pilot assignment information to review the requirements for this category. Your VoiceThread lesson should include opportunities for students to have digital conversation at the end of each phase. Developing effective discussion questions can be challenging. Joe Caruso, a faculty member from Marymount College, has developed examples of questions 
and organize them in various taxonomy levels that can be used to create discussion questions to promote critical thinking. Refer to your pilot assignment information to see examples of how to develop discussion prompts to encourage students to think critically and at deeper levels. The next part of this video will demonstrate how you might want to set up your VoiceThread lesson. We will be using the free VoiceThread account for this class. The free version permits you to create up to five VoiceThreads. You must delete any VoiceThreads you create if you reach your five limit to be able to create any new VoiceThreads. Here's how to create, here's how to set up a free VoiceThread account. Go to the VoiceThread website, which is https colon colon uh, voicethread.com. Then you sign in with your Google account. Uh, then we're gonna go ahead and create uh, a VoiceThread project. Uh, so your PowerPoint should have been previously created. Now we will upload the PowerPoint file into VoiceThread. So to do that, we're gonna go ahead and click on Create, and then we're going to click on Add Media, and we will click on uh, My Computer, and navigate to find your PowerPoint uh, file, and uh, we'll go ahead and uh, upload to your computer. Um, then it's going to ask you to add these thread settings. And it's pretty intuitive, you just follow along. The title description is a meaningful name. Uh, so I will go ahead and call this a collaborative lesson. And you can put a description in here and any meaningful, add a meaningful description here and add meaningful tab, tags. Examples could be IDL 7130 or Wright State University. Um, so we won't do any playback. Uh, you could make playback option uh, changes if you want, but you can leave it uh, at the defaults if you wish. And then come over here to cover art. And this is the small little image thumbnail that people see um, that's, that, that represents your project. So I'm gonna go ahead and click there and go find my cover art JPEG and upload it. So this image should be an image that uh, uh, uploading a, a ping file or a JPEG file that summarizes the big idea of a lesson. I will often take a screenshot of one slide in the PowerPoint presentation to use as cover art. So um, go ahead and, oh, bear with me, that did not, it did take. Um, so we'll go ahead and uh, click save. It takes a few minutes to upload. You will see where the wheel gears are moving while the file is processing. All the individual slides will be displayed once they're finished uploading. You should add instructor audio narration for all the slides. Here's how to do this using voice over the internet, which is the microphone or uh, VOIP, voice over IP. So you select the slide, you wish to add the comments, and then um, click on comment up at the top here on the top nav bar. Then you move your mouse uh, to the bottom middle of the slide and you uh, click on the plus at the bottom. We're going to select the microphone um, and you get a countdown. We will go ahead and add your audio narration and you can also click on the pencil to the right of the recording message and highlight the screen as you're talking, if you wish. There's even different colors if you want to see that better. Um, click Stop Recording when you're done. VoiceThread will play a review of your recording. If you like it, you can click Cancel. If you like it, go ahead and click Save. Click the arrow uh, to go to the next slide to continue until you're done adding audio to all of your slides. The instructor should use audio using voice over IP uh, for option for all of your slides. However, for your students, I want you to create discussion responses where they use several options for their comments 
when you create your assignment. Here's how to add comments using the telephone. So click on the plus at the bottom of your screen, select the telephone, type in your phone number and then click on call me. You will be called on your phone and prompted to speak your audio message into the phone. VoiceThread will play a preview of your recording. If you don't like it, click cancel. If acceptable, click save. The telephone option should only be used for students while adding their comments to the discussion post. Be sure to include directions on how they would post comments using this option. So, for the instructor, again, a reminder, the instructor, while you're adding the comments, should always use voice over IP microphone for all the slides. However, for your students, I want you to create discussion prompts where they can use several different options to add comments. Here's how they could do comments using the webcam. So click on the plus at the bottom, select the video cam, the screen counts down, and then start recording your webcam. Click on stop recording when you're done. The voice thread will play a preview of the recording. If you don't like it, click cancel. If it's acceptable, click save. Uh, the, again, the webcam should only be used for students while they're adding their comment discussion posts. Be sure to include directions on how they post their comments using that this option. So here's how to share the voice thread so that others can view it. Uh, click on the three lines in the upper left-hand corner right up here and uh, click on share and under here, um, click on the access tab, click on the um, who has access, and by default, it's private. So you need to uh, change this to um, anyone can comment. Um, this is critical or none of the participants will be able to add their comments to your voice thread. So click on the basic tab and then click on embed and click on copy the embed code. And we'll go ahead and close this up. Your voice thread is saved in the cloud. You should share your voice thread URL with your instructor in your self-reflection. You also need to share your voice thread URL with your group members to allow them to access as fake students so they can complete your voice thread lesson. Here's how to get the voice thread URL. So number one, you will click on share. Bear with me, share right here. And um, in the top nav bar, click on the basic tab. And um, the properties uh, that allow anyone to view and comment should be selected. And then click on copy link. Use this link to paste into your self-reflection when posting to your pilot Dropbox. You should also send this link to your group members to complete your voice thread lesson assignment as a fake student. The voice thread assignment is due by week six, Saturday by midnight. And students as fake students should go in and complete the voice thread assignment in week seven by Tuesday night at midnight. Then what you want to do is uh, when you initially post it, you should initially set the properties of your voice thread to anyone can comment so that your group members can act as a fake student and respond to your discussion prompt activities that you've included in your voice thread lesson. Your fake students again have until Tuesday uh, night of the following week to add their fake student responses. But by Wednesday, you should go into your voice thread and change the properties back to private so that your voice thread is not open for others to make com comments. Since this voice thread will be in a public forum on your Google Sites electronic portfolio, you run the risk of inappropriate posts being added by people you cannot control. So to avoid this, just set it to private so that you avoid the risk. And here's how to go back and change that again. You click on share and um, you click on the who has access tab 
and uh, you had initially set it to uh, anyone can comment and you leave it that way until Tuesday at midnight to allow your uh, group members to uh, do their posts. And then on Wednesday of the week seven, go back in and click the little down arrow, set it to private again, and click on save changes. I wanted to do a quick overview of what uh, the slides in your voice thread might look like when it's all said and done. So uh, these are individual thumbnails of some of the slides. So you're going to have a, a title slide and then um, some introductory slides. So probably more than one, maybe two or three. Then you'll have these signaling slides that will introduce each phase, so the triggering phrase. Then there will be some mini lecture triggering slides, maybe uh, three to four. Uh, then you will have a discussion prompt uh, slide and then another signaling slide, uh, the exploration phase uh, to indicate that phase and then some mini slides for the exploration. So maybe three to five of those and then a discussion prompt about the exploration phase and then we'll have a signaling um, slide to indicate the next phase of the integration phase and then um, about three slides many um, lecture slides for the integration phase followed by a discussion prompt for the um, integration phase followed by a signaling uh, slide for the resolution and then some many slides about the resolution, uh, wrapping it up, concluding, and then there will be a discussion prompt for the resolution phase, and then maybe a thank you and wrapping it up. So that's in summary, um, what your um, uh, slides will look like when you upload them to VoiceThread. So now we're gonna have some questions for you to reflect on, just to measure your learning um, uh, from this information. Question number one, uh, the directions are to select the correct answer. Uh, question is, VoiceThread is an educational tool that has many capabilities. Which of the following is not a capability of VoiceThread? Tool that can be used, that can only be used in a face-to-face -face environment, create a lesson that includes digital conversation, allow students to complete an asynchronous environment, and students have many methods to communicate, such as text posts, telephone, voice over IP or microphone or webcam. So which of those is not a capability of VoiceThread? Think about it. You might wanna pause and answer, take out a piece of paper and answer which one of those the answer would be. The answer is number one. Um, uh, tool that can only be used in a face-to-face -face environment. Um, VoiceThread can be used to create a lesson that includes digital conversation and is usually used in an asynchronous environment, not a face-to-face -face environment. VoiceThread has many options for communication such as text post, telephone, voice over IP, and webcam. Question number two, um, answer if this is true or false. So the question would be, the VoiceThread assignment should focus should primarily focus on the instructor sharing the content from the textbook. The lesson should be designed with PowerPoint slides that are uploaded to VoiceThread and include the instructor narration. The participants will watch the lesson and have no requirements for interaction. Is that true or false? Think about what the answer is. You may wanna pause uh, and then I'll give you the feedback. So the answer would be two false. The voice thread lesson assignment should include opportunities for students to post digital conversations at the end of each phase. Therefore, students will be required to interact during the lesson. Question number three, fill in the blank with the correct practical inquiry model phase. Options include the triggering phase, the exploration phase, the integration phase, or the resolution phase. So uh, which phase of the practical inquiry model ensures, en ensures engagement and buy-in from participants? An example would be icebreaker. So you can pause uh, the recording and write it down. Question number two, which phase of the practical inquiry model uh, moves participants to a full 
fuller understanding of the big ideas. An example is a mini lecture. Question number three, which phase of the practical inquiry model requires participants to assimilate the big ideas into their discipline and or field? And question number four, which phase of the practical inquiry model allows the instructor to wrap up, conclude, and summarize the big ideas of the class? So you may want to pause and write those down. And here's the feedback. So the triggering phase uh, ensures engagement and buy-in from the participant. The exploration phase moves participants to a, fully under, a fuller understanding of the big ideas. The integration phase, uh, phase requires participants to assimilate the big ideas into their discipline and or field and or personal life. And the resolution phase allows the instructor to wrap up, conclude, and summarize the big ideas. Question number four, select the correct answer. Which of these items should be included in your VoiceThread lesson? A title slide, a signaling, signaling slide, mini lecture slides with the BBP design beyond bullet point design or and or discussion prompts. Check one, two, three, or four. Go ahead and pause and then I'll come back and I'll give you feedback. So the answer is all of these items, one, two, three, and four. Your voice thread lesson should include a title slide, signaling slides, mini lecture slides with a beyond bullet point design and discussion prompt slides. So hopefully uh, this gives you an indication, uh, your level of understanding, and I look forward to seeing your assignments.